And like we have in right now in society, we have like this situation where there's a large group of people who don't feel welcomed. And if we like if more people like Vicky Weisskopf were talked about and it wasn't so much like, you know, solve the theory of everything, solve string theory, solve this, solve that, do this. You're 20, you're 25. Your career is done. Your career is done. Let's do some reading. I'm going to introduce you to a physicist, okay? <clears throat> uh, if you don't know, I like to play this game. So this is one reason to follow me on my socials. Um, we did not have a winner this week. Uh, I'll, let me pop my socials in again if anybody's just getting here. Socials. Um, we did not have a winner this week, but I do like to play this game on Twitter and Discord where I start to give you hints about this author, okay? Not uh, Well, sometimes it's an author, sometimes about the book. This book is dedicated to a physicist. So I did the I talked about the physicist that this was dedicated to, okay? And now you can like so then you were supposed to either guess the physicist or guess the book. All right, let's do some reading. So today we're going to be reading from this book called Preludes in Theoretical Physics, okay? It is from 1966, okay? And what I wanted to tell you about this. So if anybody does have a question, type exclamation mark ask and then your question like this, and it will go to a separate queue which I can answer in a little bit, okay? So this is something that is super inspirational to me, and I hope you guys find inspiration to it. Uh, I'm kind of going out on a limb because I don't know how inspirational you guys um, uh, find these things. I am going to be reading about a physicist by the name of Victor Weisskopf, or some people probably know him better as Vicky Weisskopf. Now, Vicky Weisskopf, he was born in 1908. He passed away in 2002 at the age of, I think, 93, right? I think 93. Yeah, 93 years old. Um, he is an Austrian born theoretical physicist. I'm kind of reading off of a couple of things I have here and including Wikipedia as the main one. Um, but this is the thing about Vicky Weisskopf. Okay. Is Vicky Weiss Weisskopf. Um, oh, let me spell his name for you guys. If you guys want to look him up while we're right in here, Victor Weisskopf, Austrian born physicist. Um, <clears throat> he studied under <laughs> like his resume. Oh, <laughs> he got a letter. I don't even know what age he was. I, he might have even been like under 20 years old. And he got a letter from Wolfgang Pauli asking him to come research with him. Can you imagine getting a letter from somebody like just one day, like opening up your mailbox and getting a letter from someone like Wolfgang Pauli and being asked to come research with him, be an assistant in his uh, at his institution? And so he, uh, I don't know where, where that was in the timeline, but he studied under, his graduate advisor was Max Born, okay? Um, his graduate advisor was Max Born. He studied under Bohr, Schrodinger, Pauli. Of course, he studied under Born. He um, was the mentor to Bruce French, to David Fritsch, to... Uh, um, <clears throat> I think Jackson, someone fact check me. I think that's that Jackson. I think it's that Jackson. You know that Jackson, if you've taken graduate, but on top of that, I think I got to look that up. I'm not hundred percent sure, but I'm pretty sure it's that Jackson. So he, uh, but yeah. And then Murray Gellman. Okay. Like he, he was the, that's who he was. So yeah. So he was the advisor to French Frisch, Fritsch, uh, Jackson, Gellman amongst others. Um, just a monumental figure, but you don't hear about him too much. And let me tell you a little bit about some fun things, some fun factoids, and then we'll talk about why why he was so admired and why he was such a giant. This is probably why you don't hear about him too much. He was, he did not win a Nobel Prize, but he solved a problem that did win a Nobel Prize. I think this is how the story goes. He studied a problem called the Lamb Shift. Let's look that up really quick. Lamb shift. And he didn't, he felt uncomfortable. There was a group of, there's a couple groups of people working on it. I don't know the exact, exact story, but he was working on this problem called the lamb shift. He solved it and then didn't, same guy as Enum Jackson. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that Jackson, he is that Jackson. And he studied under Vicky Weisskopf, yeah. Crazy, crazy the, the the legacy that he left. Um, I mean, Gellman alone would have been huge, but then on top of that, Jackson, Fritch, French. 
Um, so I guess it's French and Vicky Weisskopf and Galman were working on this lamb shift and they didn't, um, they felt uncomfortable. I guess maybe there's something that goes that Schwinger, Schwinger and Feynman said that they didn't feel comfortable with Vicky Weisskopf's, uh, calculation or they, they, they thought it was wrong, but they made a mistake or something along those lines. Anyways, lamb and company, um, I don't remember who it was. Willis, Eugene, Lamb, and ooh, somebody else. I think it was two other, or one other person. They solved the Lamb shift problem, which is a gamma radiation problem, and uh, they had the same result. But they published theirs first, and they ended up going on to. I think he ended up going on to win uh, the Nobel Prize, if I remember right. Let me double check that. Um, yes, Nobel Prize in 1955. Yep. So that would have been. So if. We well, you know it might have been, you know, the Weisskopf shift or something like that. Um, very, very interesting. Uh, but he he hesitated <laughs> because he was unconfident in his calculation, and then somebody else print somebody else went through with their calculation and published it, and were correct. Okay, so uh, let's do a little reading. I'm gonna read some stuff. We're gonna kill the music in a second. Let me do a little reading, and then we'll talk about why I think this is important, why I think it's interesting and and cool. <laughs> Be a cool cat. Okay. Um, so this book is called The uh, Preludes in Theoretical Physics from 1966. It is a, a collection. There's Vicky Weisskopf uh, and his signature. So now you can go sign things for him. Uh, maybe vote in the upcoming election. Uh, that's a joke, everybody. It's a joke. Um, <clears throat> Vicky Weisskopf voted um, 10,000 times. Now, <clears throat> it's a series of essays dedicated to Vicky Weisskopf. And let me just read you some of the uh, some of the dedications in it and some of the things and some of the interesting things from it, okay? So here's the editor's forward. So this is the editors, the people that put it together. Towards the end of 1964, it became known that Vicky Weisskopf had decided to go back to the back to MIT. That's 1964. After having served as the director general of CERN for 5 years, hopes were expressed that Vicky might still change his mind, but it became clear that this time his decision was definite. Many of us who have been visiting CERN and working there for shorter or longer periods felt an urge to express our gratitude to Vicky for everything he has done for these five years to make CERN such a pleasant and stimulating place. Suggestions of various sorts were brought up, but it seemed to us that this purpose could be best served by a collection together remarks uh, by collecting together remarks and studies of special character and dedicating this collection to Vicky Weisskopf. Vicky has won a special reputation for this instance uh, on looking at any given problem in physics from a variety of angles and for his attempt to reduce to bare minimum formal derivations far before Feynman was talking about it, okay? Like, like he, Weisskopf wrote the book on reductionism. Okay, anyway, <laughs> that's just a joke. Um, his intuitive way of looking at things has been a source of aesthetic pleasure to everyone who has had the good fortune of working with him. As a matter of fact, it is this philosophy of his that has given rise to some of the most exciting seminars at CERN and has guided the thinking of many of its scientists. The preludes collected in this volume are intended to illustrate some, some such approaches to a variety of physical problems. The list of Vicky's close friends is too long to have been covered in a volume like the present one. We have therefore limited our invitations only to those theoretical physicists who visited CERN and spent some time there. We tried to make sure that the list was as complete as possible, but there might be might have been some omissions, and we express our apologies to them. Finally, Vicky's work at CERN would have been impossible without the understanding, encouragement, of and help of Ellen Weisskopf. We wish to take an opportunity to thank her, too, for the warm atmosphere all of us have found at their home and for the complimenting uh, and for complimenting so harmoniously with Vicky's contributions at CERN. That's by Deschalet, Feshbach, and Van Hoof. Of course, Feshbach um, went on to do all sorts of great things for, phys for physics. Um, if he hadn't already done them by now, I don't really know his timeline too well. Um, Vicky Weisskopf's, uh, the Ellen is his first wife, I think. Uh, his first wife, Ellen, died in 1989. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then let's just read the introduction a little bit. And, uh, Feshbach Resonances. Yeah, there it is. This next part is by none other than HBG Casimir. That is the Casimir from the Casimir Effect. Obviously a huge, huge, um, scientific, you know, giant with the cashmere effect and altogether um 
you know, fantastic. Uh, in 1960, so this is the introduction by Casimir, okay? Another good friend of um, Vicky Weisskopf. 1916, C.G. Baker was killed in an airplane accident and a new director general of CERN had to be appointed. This is a very important part because it actually explains what role Vicky Weisskopf actually played. So listen to what, he's, what he says Vicky did at, the, uh, at, the, uh, at CERN. But also in other respects, CERN was <clears throat> then in a state of transition. The construction of the synchro, oh, synchro cyclotron and of the big accelerator, ooh, which would soon turn into LHC, by the way, um, and later to find the Higgs, which hadn't even been thought of at this time, right? The construction of the uh, synchrocyclotron and the big accelerator had been successfully completed. Physicists were gradually taking over from engineers and beginning to obtain interesting experimental results. It was important that the original fervor and spirit of cooperation that had led to the creation of a European center of high energy physics should be maintained now that the first building period was over. Important, not only to those working at CERN, but in a broader sense to all physicists. It has always been the claim of scientists that they have little difficulty to arrive at international understanding as long as they are not hampered by the dullness of commercial acumen or the insipidity of diplomatic adroitness. Through CERN, they had to prove their point, for this was the organization created by physicists for the pursuit of physics, not by governments or economic purposes, for some vague reasons of prestige. When Vicky Weisskopf accepted the appointment, this was a great relief, even to those who were only indirectly involved, but who knew the man and his backgrounds. Few word about his backgrounds, although the years from 1924 to 1935, with their gr gravi uh, ooh, grievous economic depression and threat, um, and finally the arrival of Nazism. Remember, he's a Jew in Germany in 1930s, uh, going to graduate school. So very, very dangerous for him. He had to get out, um, and he did. He ended up getting a job in the states, uh, luckily. Um, so the arrival, so the the threat and arrival of Nazism were in many ways alarming. They will be remembered by theoretical physicists as a happy era. Why? Well, there was a feeling of great spiritual breakthrough, followed by surprisingly rich harvest. There was a feeling of belonging to a small select inner circle headed by a few outstanding men. Weisskopf, who had worked with Gotten, Zurich, and Copenhagen, Copenhagen, uh, before moving to the United States, was one of the prominent younger members of this group. He worked with Wigner and Pauli. Their power of mathematical penetration left their mark upon him. He knew Ehrenfest and well, he knew Ehrenfest well and felt akin to him because of his preference for simple, clear, and beautiful formulations. And above all, he under, underwent the influence of Bohr's depth and wisdom. But while others may wistfully Remember those days. It is Weisskopf's unique achievement that he has carried over the devoted idealism and the enthusiasm of his early days into a new world of organized research and large-scale experimentation. Through the work he did at CERN, through the impact of his mature personality, he has had a profound influence on modern physics in Europe. Uh, this, the, pres the present essays in which we try to capture some of his spirit is offered to him as a small token of gratitude. This is crazy. The, I mean, like, can you imagine that type of lifestyle where like these physicists are just so in awe of how good, not of your achievements, but of how you are at, at, as, as an administrator, as a teacher, as a friend, like that's crazy to me. That's huge. And like we get these, we get, we get so caught up on like what someone's achieved, what big breakthrough they had, what big monumental thing that they've done. But, like, this is insane to think that, like, Weisskopf was not known for having any one particular giant breakthrough, but just being really good at his craft and being an excellent, excellent leader and uh, director. And I think that's amazing. Uh, let me uh, read the end of the last essay um, that's an essay on Time's Arrow, <laughs> believe it or not. But anyways, it's not important. The less important thing is to say, surely there are other and deeper answers to the problems here touched in an elementary way, but it's worthwhile to try to talk even about these weighty matters in a simple physical language with order of magnitude estimates. There is pleasure and instruction both in such a method. That is what I have learned, however imperfectly, watching with delight the master of the style, Victor F. Weisskopf. Isn't that amazing? It's... Super, super interesting to me that 
Like, this is what he's known for. He's known for his way of explaining. He's known for his way of um, teaching, for his way of directing. Like, people talk about how welcoming he is, how... And isn't that just, like, something that's brilliant? And, like, we have, in right now, in society, we have, like, this situation where there's a large group of people who don't feel welcomed. And if we... Like, if more people like Vicky Weisskopf were talked about, and it wasn't so much, like... You know, solve the theory of everything. Solve string theory. Solve this. Solve that. Do this. You're 20. You're 25. Your career is done. Your career is done. Like if it was less talk about that and more talk about how much of an impact you can leave on. It wasn't like five people. Like they listed off like easily 12 people. And then there's so many. And the authors of this book who interacted with Weisskopf, the authors of the essays in this book, are are no. It's no. Let's read some of them. We have Fierce from the Fierce Identities, T.D. Lee, Klein, Lipkin, uh, Oppenheimer, um, Nambu, Heisenberg, Wolfenstein, Lowe from Gelman and Lowe, <clears throat> Wick, Beta, Feshbach. I mean, these are not like, I think that's John S. Bell even. Is that right? John Bell? Maybe it's a different bell. There's quite a few bells, so maybe I shouldn't say that one. I don't know. But like these are like these are really, really big names. And I think that it's exciting um and and really, really inspiring for someone like me to know that like <laughs> at twenty five you didn't have time to think about anything, you just finished education. It's like but this is like that's the reality of people. It's like people want you to be focused on results. They want you to focus on you know, the next breakthrough. They want you to do all this stuff. But, like, someone like Victor Weisskopf is just, he is, he was so admired. And he led to, like, he inspired people. He led to those giants that ended up doing it, like Gelman. Uh, I did want to say one more thing just to, to set it home. This was a uh, a little bit of a, 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 what's it, a memorial to him, I think? Uh, MIT in the science, he was an uh, instructor at MIT. That was the thing. Um, MIT and the scientific community lost a giant in 2002 when Victor Frederick Weisskopf passed away. Known by students and colleagues alike as Vicky, he was among the most accomplished and admired physicists of the 20th century. A beloved teacher, Weisskopf developed a sought-after style that emphasized conceptual understanding and qualitative description over rigorous mathematical derivation. He used to sum up his style with the slogan, Search for Simplicity. I mean, like, that's so cool. And, like, to be known for that and to be admired for that. And it was really, really cool. So if you guys – I want to do a little, a quick little poll here. Uh, we can just do it in chat. Just type 1 if you've ever heard of Vicky Weisskopf or type 2 if you have never heard of Vicky Weisskopf. It's weird. Like, you've heard of Galmine. You've probably have heard of uh, Feshbach. You've probably heard of, of um, Jackson. You've heard of his students, you've heard of his advisors, but you didn't hear about him. And it's interesting because you might think at the first sight, like maybe um, maybe he didn't have like a big role to play in physics, but the exact opposite was true. And you can just tell by all of these people who are remembering him by dedicating a book to him, by dedicating memorials to him. Like he left such a huge impact on the community. And I knew of him quite well. I didn't know some of the stuff. Um, I, I certainly didn't realize how spread out he was amongst the community. I mean, Wigner, uh, Bohr, Born, uh, Heisenberg, or not Heisenberg, Schrodinger, well, probably Heisenberg. Not to mention, Weisskopf worked with Schwinger and Feynman very closely. Because um, he worked on QED.